Good morning. There are two spots where every speaker dreads. One is the opening speaker, because you get a mix of what was left over from the yacht party last night. I see a couple of uh, weary eyes out there. And the second worst one is the guy right before the bar opens. So hopefully, hopefully I'll share a few ideas with you this morning and uh, set it up so that David and, and Barbara and Van and Robin can all hit it home for you. It's uh, truly an honor to be here. I apologize for bringing the snow again on the middle of April. Um, my wife loves snow, so I think it's a hangover from when uh, she sends me anywhere. She always wants to be nice and cold, so I don't enjoy the outside. So apologies for bringing the snow, but I can't thank you enough for letting me participate in your day and talk a little bit about something that's very, very, very important to me and has made a significant difference in the lives of my family, my associates, and hopefully will make a little bit of difference for you. Whether you want to be an MDRT member or not, I think the ideals that MDRT uphold are something that a lot of people don't really know about. So my job over the next few years in my position is to be able to share the why of MDRT. Why should you qualify for MDRT? Or if you're already a qualifier, maybe you run a multi-line practice, you're doing a lot of business, you're very successful in your own right. Why MDRT? Why is that important to anybody sitting here today? How many of you are MDRT members? Okay, how many of you go to the annual meeting regularly? Fewer? Okay. I find a lot of people in my talks that pay their dues and they're members of the Million Dollar Roundtable. But I also find a lot of people that don't necessarily get all that's expected out of their MDRT membership. They look at MDRT as this big conglomeration of people around the world. We're 42,000 members this year, 10,000 of those from the United States. And I hear it time and time again, you know, I'll go if the meeting's right, maybe it's in the right location, maybe I just don't feel like I need another idea this year. Well, I've been to 26 annual meetings with this one in Toronto. My very first one was actually in Toronto uh, way back when. And I found that it's not the ideas that I want to get each year that drive me to go back year after year. It's the fear of missing one of them. You take this group here today and you take the accumulation of knowledge that we have, a collective brain, I'll call it, and I find that the biggest opportunity doesn't come from the main platform stage. The main platform gets you here in the room, but it's the ideal you'll pick up sitting next to somebody that will change your career forever. How many of you have been to the Grand Canyon? How many of you have gone down into the Grand Canyon, all the way to the river? About 20%. And what I find is, MDRT is like going to the Grand Canyon. Beautiful views. If you stand up on the South Rim and you look over, the journey of getting there is beautiful. But after about a half an hour, it's just so beautiful and so big. You think, I've seen it all. I can see everything. But just like MDRT, the beauty is not standing on the rim and looking at it. The beauty of the Grand Canyon comes when you hike down to the river. And just like MDRT, there are many paths to get down to that river. Just like there are many paths to get to MDRT. You can take the easy path. You can take the hard path. You can cut your own path. But what I found in my journey down to that river was I used the path that had been very well trodden. The one that others had gone before and cut the hard part out. And what I found on my journey down to the river was that the canyon view changed every two minutes. The beauty of the Grand Canyon is when you get down deep inside and you look at the views around you. You get mountain views. You get forest views. You go through an arid desert. You get down to the river and the 
coolness of the Colorado River stays with you forever. Well, that's like MDRT. A lot of people show up at the meeting. A lot of people have the plaque on the wall. But only a few, like the people you hear today and the Hammers and a couple of other people in this room who've actually gotten deep inside of MDRT and volunteered. And they found that the beauty of the journey is going down deep inside of it. Their ideas change, their practices change, their views change, and you become a different person when you come back out of that canyon. You become a different person when you come out of MDRT involvement. It's spectacular once you get down inside of it. And you can find a view that matches what you want to do. So why MDRT? I'm the number one producer in my office. Many of you are the number one producers in your office. I'm also the only producer in my office. I don't have people to compete and push me like the MetLife agency here that has 70 agents that constantly push each other to do better. Like the Northwestern Mutual agent that is all of the, the grandeur and the spectacle of, of an agency and the dynamics of, a, of an agency to push each other. So why MDRT? Well, we spent a lot of money at MDRT to, to basically identify a couple of different types of members and different stages in somebody's career. And we hired consultants to come up with categories of names and the three different career stages that just about anybody in this room fits in. Young whippersnapper, the know-it-alls, and the old coots. That's not really the names that we use, but think about that. As I go through my story today, think about which ones you fit in. There's sales mastery. Last night at the YAD event, it was wonderful to hear the excitement of the people that were there. I remember vividly in 1985 when I got into the business, talking to the MDRT members and gathering ideas. And I could hear myself and a lot of the questions that were asked, thinking someday, wouldn't it be great to be able to answer those for somebody else? Then I moved into a stage of business development, which we all do. We go from wide-eye exuberance to, boy, this is hard work. I made it. I'm making a lot of money. I'm doing well. I'm helping clients. But now I've got to focus on becoming more efficient. And then as we close out our careers, we move into the legacy development. It's not about the plaques and the ribbons anymore. It's about what am I going to leave behind? When they put up my tombstone, is it going to be Brian Heckert CLU or Brian Heckert made a difference? That's legacy development. My career started right here in 1969. This is my first grade picture, and I went to Johannesburg University, as we used to call it. A little country school, and this is the entire first grade class. I grew up on a farm in the middle of the country. Our, my, my town I live in right now is not too far away from this school, and it's 3,000 people. But I learned back then something very important. My dad was on the school board. My dad was on the local fire district. My dad served on the church board of elders. I learned that it's important to be involved. Now these people here, a lot of them, all of them are still alive. We almost had a 40th year anniversary. We couldn't find one person. But we learned back then that it's not your name that matters. It's what you do with your name that matters. And I was very fortunate that my dad was a farmer but my dad had a good name. I say often that my dad sold more life insurance in my first 15 years in this business for me because of his good name. What's the legacy you're leaving behind? Well, I like this picture as well because I met something, somebody very important to me. She's been an inspiration my entire life. Uh, she's my wife. And we went to first grade together, got married uh, when we were 19, I uh, had a couple of kids, and when I got engaged at 19, I was actually working in a uh, meatpacking plant. 
And I never went to college, never was fortunate enough to have that discussed by my father. My father thought, like all of my other siblings, we would just be farmers, just like everybody else, or work somewhere in the farming industry. But I learned from also from my father that you buy life insurance on a regular basis. So when we got married at 19, my first phone call that first month was to the life insurance guy. And I said, I want to buy a life insurance policy. I couldn't understand why they thought that was unique. <laughs> I then had, our, or we had our first child, Christopher. And Christopher had to stay back in the hospital a few extra days. Back then with C-sections, it was a seven-day ordeal in the hospital. And he had to stay about a three extra days. So my wife and I picked her up at the hospital and we went and bought diapers and formula. And before we even went home, we stopped by the life insurance agent again and said, we need more life insurance. And I couldn't figure out why they thought that was so unique. So I bought life insurance on me and Mary and Christopher. And it was one year to the day after I stopped by that office that I was given my first contract at 21. And it was because they said they had never had anybody so young desire to buy life insurance that they decided to give this kid without a college education, not really a great track record as a teenager, a chance in the life insurance business. And you look at your succession plan out there, and you think about the people that would make great agents, and it's usually not the ones with the biggest pedigree, is it? It's the ones with the biggest desires. How many succession plans do we have in our client base that we can hire from the people who show an above average inclination to love our products? Well, my wife and I have now been married coming up on 31 years, and we celebrated our 30th anniversary with a cruise. And I show you this picture for one simple reason. I now get to deduct the cruise. So, but that's, that's my family. We, we were uh, very fortunate to have uh, three boys and a, a daughter, and then two grandchildren and another one coming up in July. And uh, I with grandchildren, you start to think a little bit about your legacy. So why MDRT? Enough about me. Why MDRT? It's the benchmark of excellence. As I said earlier, I'm the number one producer in my office. How do I compare against the number one producer in Malaysia or Korea or South Africa? or Chicago, or Minneapolis, I can benchmark my business success against the best in the industry. I can use goals that other people have set. I can use paths that other people have gone to. When you go to the Grand Canyon, you hike to the river, the river is the destination. All the rest of it is just a bonus when you go down there. But MDRT is the benchmark of sales excellence for the financial services profession. We're the top 42,000 producers in the world as measured by production. And we're a destination. Inspiration. Some of the best motivational speakers have come across our stage. Many of them have participated here in Minneapolis. But we have the opportunity, because of the reputation we have, to bring some of the best messages and I'll tell you what, after three days in a main platform session, hearing some of the best people in the world talk about their stories, you get the understanding that maybe, maybe, I just don't have it that bad. Maybe there's other people's stories that can inspire me to not only do more sales, but to be better. So early in my career, it was the benchmark of excellence that drove me. I wanted to be an MDRT producer. It was the inspiring stories at Main Platform. That's what drove me early in my career to go back again and again. And that's what we find with a lot of people that come into MDRT. It's those two things that get them in the door. But then it becomes more than that. How do I sell more with the time I'm given? You look in your agencies, you look in your offices, and there seems to be people who have a money machine in their sales category. How do they do it? Everybody's got the same 24 hours a day. Everybody has the same phone book of prospects. Why do some people do more? And what I find in the time and time again, 
when I talk to the people who go to MDRT, is they find out what they can do better than anybody else. It's the same products. Whether you sell life insurance for this company or this company, it's life insurance. You pay a premium, it pays when they die. The motivational story that you can get your clients to hook into and believe about the need for that intangible benefit are what make the difference. So early in my career, it was the people who shared with me how to get people to get off of a ledger statement and get into their mind about why life insurance makes a difference. Ben Feldman once said it, it's a drop of ink and a piece of paper, and it changes legacies. I'm very fortunate to be able to speak with a lot of different emerging market economies, and I tell them time and time again, you have the ability to change the destination of a country. As an agency, if you put a billion dollars of life insurance in force, you can change the entire legacy of families for years and years to come. But you can do it here too. Think about the people that you don't have time to see who need a million dollars of life insurance, but you don't have the time to write a $200 premium app. Think about the legacy that changes. And when I started to think about it's legacy building, not death benefit that I'm selling is when my practice changed tremendously. That's what I found at MDRT. I had more sales and I became more productive. One of the best sales ideas I ever got was in the exhibits area, just like we had breakfast this morning with those exhibitors. Those exhibitors make this meeting affordable for you. And I used to go to the meeting just to pick up the pens and things to take back to my kids. But one year, I was asked to become a little bit more involved. And I actually run the, the committee that was in charge of getting the exhibitors to the annual meeting, again in Toronto, 1995. And it was a big commitment that year. I gave up probably, you know, five, six weeks of my time throughout the year to make sure we had a full exhibit hall. And as I was at that exhibit hall, I had the opportunity, I'd been talking to a lot of the exhibitors, I had the chance to sit down and actually talk to one of the exhibitors. I said, you know, this costs you about three, four, five thousand dollars to come up here to Toronto. You spend three to four days with us. Is it worth your time? He said, Brian, he said, this is like Christmas for me. He said, I can spend five days in a nice hotel. 100% of my prospects come to me. I don't make one phone call this entire week. And they come to my desk to ask me about my product. And that's all fine and good, but here was the payoff that changed my career forever. He said, why don't you look at that in your business? Why don't you find a client that you really like working with and find out if there's an MDRT in their business? Because you know what? If they're a successful trucking company or successful manufacturing organization or successful veterinarian, they have association meetings just like this one today. And he said, why don't you find a good one, a good client that you like, and if you go to their meeting, you'll find two to 500 more just like them. And if you put up a booth, they'll come to you and ask you about your product. I took that idea, and over the next two years, I went from qualifying for million dollar round table to qualifying for top of the table. Because I figured out associations like this want good exhibitors, and you get to go to some very nice hotels, and they ask you to speak on topics like estate planning, 401k plans, succession planning. It's a great way, I call it 100 to 1 marketing, and it's what transformed my practice. I went from calling up one client and making one phone call and getting one rejection to setting up a booth and letting them determine if they want to do business with me, but in my environment. And then when I speak, I become the immediate expert in their association. Transform my career. So I went from productivity to business development. I made it to the top of the table. Didn't keep it there because I got full of myself. But I kept going back. MDRT became the best of the best. Made it once. How do I keep going? And what I found in my involvement is I got to work with guys like Tony Gordon and Marv Feldman. Got to know the savages. And I got to find people who 
helped me change my business plan. I also, that same time, was able to meet a number of people through the committee work that are friends for life. And we not only share best sales ideas, we share productivity ideas. Now at this stage, it was about how do I keep my staff productive? How do I find good people who enhance my inefficiencies? How do I hire the best? And what I found, one of the best ideas I got from a, a member by the name of Randy Scritchfield gave a presentation. He said, you know what, Brian? He said, too many agents try and hire the degree to fill the position. He says, I've had my best success hiring the person and training the degree. So I changed the focus. I thought I needed somebody who had a finance degree to, to do my work. And I changed my perspective and I started hiring people that I like to work with. People who were number one in their class, who were brilliant people. And then I found it was very easy to teach them about our industry. And my productivity went up again. A couple of other ideas, and you're going to hear Robin Miller talk about it this afternoon. Social Security legacy. I found ways to turn premium dollars, uh, turn, turn Social Security benefits into premium dollars. An idea I'm going to share with you, one of, the, one of the things we've been working with quite a bit lately. We have clients that have too much income at retirement. And what I find is they get the Social Security check, they pay taxes on it. It's, although they like it, nobody turns down their Social Security check. And most of them just stick it away in some kind of investment somewhere, build it up in a CD account. One of the things that has transformed my practice recently has been using Social Security dollars to buy life insurance premiums. And the phrase that I learned is how would you like to create a Social Security legacy? Because nobody thinks Social Security is going to go on for their kids and grandkids. So by changing the wording, rather than taking premium dollars out of their investment account, we choose to reinvest the Social Security check into life insurance premiums and that creates a social security legacy for the kids and grandkids that is funded forever. It's amazing what $1,800 a month will buy for a 65 year old. And what you can do is perpetuate the social security legacy even if the United States government chooses never to do it again. I use life insurance as an asset class. In my portfolios that we design, we have a strategy called Apple, A-P-P-L-E. And when we invest clients' money, we have three different buckets we choose to put money in for a reason. We have an active manager class, because you know what? There are some very good active money management people. There are Putnam and Fidelity and American Funds, great active managers. And about half of the time, active management outperforms passive management, your index funds. Well, the other half of the time, if they're not top, Passive management does well. So we fill up a bucket, a third of the assets in passive management. We buy index funds, Vanguard, ETFs, whatever. So half of the time active management does better, half the time passive management does better. But there's also half of the time when none of them do well. And that's when we use legacy, or uh, protected. Protected is variable annuities with income guarantees. And people say, well, that's three halves. I said, yeah, because we don't know when active is going to do better and when both of them are going to do bad. So what we do is we build a variable annuity package that has a little bit of active, a little bit of passive. But if it all goes to heck in a handbasket, that income guarantee will provide you an income stream so you'll never have to live with your children. So it's active is A, passive is P, protected is P, and then for those that want to pass that on and not live to 95 and have zero in the bank, we create a legacy bucket. And that's where we take a little bit of, of re, we call it reallocation of their growth when there are growth years. We take that and we shift that aside to pay premiums in the future. So APPLE is Apple. I don't talk about beta coefficients. I don't talk about expense ratios. 
And what I found is in my presentations, the brightest minds out here make it the simplest. That helped me develop more business. I learned about revenue management. There's a period in my career after I made top of the table where I thought I was invincible. I thought I could have multiple businesses. And that all works good while they're all generating income. But from 2002 to 2004, I went through some pretty tough times. In fact, I was served on a committee at MDRT and I went through four credit cards before I could found one just to cover the deposit. I wasn't even paying for the room. Now, I'm not real proud about that statement, but I am proud of the fact that a couple of people in MDRT could sense what was going on. And it's the friendships you find and the people who pull you aside and say, Brian, you can be better than this. Clean up your act. You have too much to offer to this industry to let your financial service or your financial problems take you out of it. That was a wake-up call. I thought I could do anything. But with the help of some friends, I actually showed them my own financial plan. I laid it out, and they gave me a path to follow. And over the next few years, I now have the revenue stream management to be able to afford the time that I can give back to this industry. How many people do you know in this room are back in the office who are struggling financially? Take time, pull them aside, give them a hand up. It'll make a difference that you'll never, never be able to repay. Staff development, I talked about that. One of the best things I do is to invest in my staff, not in salary, but in the intangibles. We have outings. We get everybody together. We have study group meetings for our staff people. When I have my study group meeting, we pick every other year and we bring all the staff together. Let them talk about us without us there. And it's amazing the, inner, the ideas that they share amongst each other and it helps everybody get better. And time management, that's one of the best things in the world I learned. I had a member tell me one time, he said, you know, the difference between me and other people, because this, this member was taken off two, three months a year. He said, most members take their vacation every day, five minutes per hour. When they check Facebook, they check email that they don't need, they walk over to the water cooler, and they take their vacation five minutes an hour. He said, when I show up at work, I take nothing off, and I work. So I can save those five minutes and I can take off three months a year. He said, which one do you want to do? And I started thinking about what are the things that take my time that are so important? I read the mail, I checked my email, checked my Facebook, because you know, I want to know what Ted Nugent's doing every day. I got to know. But how many of us take our vacations, instead of spending it with our families, we take five-minute vacations every hour? Time management, the biggest thing that helped me develop my business. And you know what? I love MDRT because it's fun. You guys think you had fun at the yacht party last night? Imagine that 365 days a year with your members. If I'm up in Minnesota and I want to go bird hunting, I can call Steve. If I'm in Mississippi, I can call Larry and go fishing. And I can tie in a little bit of business with it. You can mix business and fun and still have everybody come out on top. Then you get into legacy development. What is the reason we work? Why are we here? It's because we want to leave a legacy for our kids. So MDRT has a great program called The Whole Person. It involves your financial life, your spiritual life your relations with families and staff. Are you a nice person? When you pick up the phone and call somebody at the home office, do they want to talk to you? I find a lot of people think they want to be talked to, but most of the time the home office is scared not to take the phone call. What about your health? Look at this body. I mean, I would hard to think of what I would look like if I hadn't taken the time to take care of it. Education, never stop learning. Career development, what stage are you at? Are you 60 years old and still want to master sales? Service to your community. It's the total package of what we have available. 
Study groups are the premier cornerstone of what MDRT is. MDRT started as a study group in 1927. 32 members got together at a NAFA meeting and said, we all write a lot of volume. Let's keep this going. Let's hold each other accountable. And that was the origins of the Million Dollar Club of NAFA. And over the years, we've started and perpetuated study groups time and time again. You have some great members here. Who's in a study group? Become a legacy and help others understand the benefits of how to start and how to maintain a study group. We're focusing a lot of resources going forward on helping members get together and start and maintain study groups. This group started in 1998. Brian Sweet's actually a member of Minnesota NAFA. He was here yesterday. We started as 11 members, and back then we were all struggling to get to quarter the table. I think the total, I did the numbers, we did total production back then of 11 offices was somewhere around a million six, million seven ish, somewhere around there. Last year, in 2013, the combined production of this group was in excess of $10 million of first year revenue. That's the power of study group. We held each other accountable time and time and time again when it was hard. Now, I don't say that to impress you with the numbers. I'm telling you to impress you with the potential of what you can do as a group. It becomes your mastermind group. It becomes a collective brain to share ideas and hold each other accountable. MDRT helps people become leaders. Running this organizational meeting for the last 15, 16 years, helps Steve become a better leader. When you have to coordinate co people coming in, you, the presidents of this wonderful organization, you found the years that you were president, your production probably increased, not decreased. When you have to lead other people who choose not to be led sometimes, it helps you become better at what you do, not only in this organization or MDRT, but you become better in your church you become better in your rotary. When you can lead people effectively, this is your training ground, NAFA and MDRT. We have a wonderful foundation. Minnesota is kind of like ground zero for Feed the Hungry Children. You've got two different great organizations. We change the world, and that's the other thing. We give back to the communities. We raise a lot of money so that we can give it back. And another cornerstone that we're so proud of is our mentoring program. Many of you were mentored unofficially by somebody. Somebody brought you into this practice. Somebody brought you into this wonderful business, gave you a chance, and they helped guide you. We have an official program through MDRT called the Mentoring Program in which you can mentor somebody if you're an MDRT member, or you can apply to be an aspirant if you're wanting to go to MDRT, and we'll connect you with somebody who can help give you that leg up when you need it most. And the beauty of the MDRT program, if you have people in your office or somebody that you want to mentor, if you go to the annual meeting, they can go to the annual meeting as well with 50% production. So if you're an MDRT member and you have two aspirants and they get about to 50,000 of first year commissions, you can take them with you to New Orleans meeting in 2015 and it costs nothing. The beauty of this program is most mentors look at it as training. It's not training. But what we find in, in 2012, we did a study, and the average production of our mentors in one big mutual company, the mentor's production increased by 17%. We'll do the math. The average MDRT member for that company was about $200,000 a year. That's $34,000 extra for just helping somebody. And it came through joint work. It came through increased awareness of how they run their own practice. Mentoring's a key where you help somebody else out, and it helps you out so much better. And it doesn't have to be a weekly call. It doesn't have to be a, a cup of coffee every month. I'm mentoring this young man in Brunei, and we do it through email. He sends me his goals. I reply back to him with where I think he can increase. He has a problem in his life. I help answer it based upon my world experience. But what it's done for him is it's helped him keep his focus more than an agency manager would, more than his family would. It gives him somebody who's cheerleading for him. 
What can you do to help mentor somebody else? Why MDRT? The final stages of your career, we help connect people for talent management. We merge people of different talents together. We call it joint work. I've worked with Roger Syme on things. I've worked with a guy in Mississippi. I've worked with a member in New Jersey. Not because I'm great at what I do, it's because I'm different than what they do. I can bring a level of expertise in my narrow world that helps them put business on the books. We are an accumulation of 10,000 of the best minds. And it's an untapped resource. All you have to do is call up. Practice mergers. I'll look around this room, and there's a lot of people closer to the end of their career than they are the beginning of their career. And we help connect people through the mentoring program, through other programs that we have, where you can find somebody, where you can test drive them in an MDRT environment to see if they're the people you want to work with. And practice acquisitions. My practice grows because of acquisitions. Not because I look for them, but I find people out there who are at the end of their career who want to hand it off to somebody they trust. And we've acquired six practices in the last seven or eight years in which we were able to team up our youth and our business style with a practice that doesn't have the same things. We've acquired pension practices and added life insurance. We've acquired estate planning practices and added asset management. But most importantly, we give them the thing that they want most after 30, 40 years in this business. They want an exit strategy. They want somebody to take care of their staff. And they most importantly want somebody to take care of their clients who they've spent the last 30 years making sure they're treated like family. Who do you know that's looking to exit? Could be in your company, could be in a different agency. But the power of the relationship for practice acquisition is huge. MDRT and NAFA are just nothing more than a big collective brain. And I want to share a story from a book called The Irrational Optimist by Matt Ridley. I highly recommend you read it. There's a lot of good things in there, but the first two or three chapters are your payoff. He talks about the collective brain and why are we in this room today? Well, way back when, the Neanderthal man and the Homo sapien lived about the same time together. The body structure was very close, the brain capacity is very stroke, the diet was very close. Very similar in their physical structure and based upon studies of brain capacity, probably about the same level of brain capacity. So why did the Neanderthal die off? And what they found in this studies and what Matt Ridley talks about in his thing got me thinking about the value of why MDRT why do we get together as a group? And what he proved and what they've proven is that over the time period of when from, from 10,000 years that they could measure from the Neanderthal to when the last known campfire they could find, in that 10,000 year period, the only interaction that Neanderthal had was with other Neanderthals. The only tool they had was an ax which could be defensive, it could be offensive. But what they found was the Neanderthal did not integrate and usually kill the competition. And what they did is they choked off the access to ideas, they choked off the access to creativity. On the other hand, the Homo sapien, over that same 10,000 year period, started off with shells in the Mediterranean, but then they started finding trade and interaction not only trade of goods, but trade of ideas. And it was the interaction between the groups of Homo sapiens in which they encouraged open exchange of ideas to let the Homo sapien grow and prosper. It's the cross-pollinization of human beings time and time again. It's why NAFE is so important. It's not the one idea you'll get today, it's the aggregate of all the ideas that you will take back and synthesize. And the power of this meeting today is not the eight hours you'll give it in this room. It's the next year you'll give it when you start talking to other people in your office who aren't here about the ideas. Scotty Brennan famously says, if I have an idea and you have an idea, we each come with one idea. 
But if we share those ideas, I now have two ideas, and you have two ideas. That's the beauty of a networking environment like MDRT and NAFA that allows us to cross-pollinate and share ideas so that we can become stronger. It's the reason we exist. What I like most about MDRT, it helps me be the best me I can be. I can't be a better Roger Syme. I can't be a better Aaron Hammer. I can't be a better Barb Petrangelo. But I can be a better Brian Heckert. And there's no end at the end of being the best I can be. So if you haven't made your plans yet, please consider coming to Toronto. If you're one of those members that have been to the edge of the Grand Canyon, if you've been to one MDRT meeting, and you said, boy, that's big and beautiful, but I'm not coming back, please give us a couple days of your time. Get down into the bottom of what MDRT has to offer. Take a journey down a proven path and see if you can't become a better person in the process. Thank you very much for your time.